On the anniversary of the Russo-Georgian War, we spoke to the journalist Luke Harding, special correspondent for the Guardian newspaper and author of the book Invasion, who was personally an eyewitness to Russian aggression and its consequences in Georgia. I was based in Moscow at the time. I was the bureau chief for the Guardian um, at, at that period. And, and funnily enough, about six weeks before before the invasion, because I think that's what it was. It was a Russian invasion of Georgia. Uh, we went on holiday to 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 Georgia. Flew from Moscow to Tbilisi, the capital, with my wife Phoebe and our two kind of medium sized kids, and we 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 just kind of rattled around like tourists. We went uh, up the old military highway. We went. Uh, to Gori, where Stalin was born. Uh, we went swimming in hot, sulfurous waters, uh, enjoyed Georgian food. But even then, it was it was pretty clear that something was brewing because um, at the time, uh, I picked up a copy of the, the Georgian English language newspaper, The Messenger, and the front page was, was a visit by Condoleezza Rice, the then US Secretary of State under George W. Bush, who had flown in to see Mik uh, Mikhail Saakashvili uh, and they, they did a, when they did a press conference, Russian jets buzzed the presidential palace. And, and it was clear that something was brewing. There were exercises which happened uh, right on the kind of North Ossetia, uh, you know, border, uh, large scale military exercises. And there was one expert, one Russian expert, Pavel Felgenhauer, who wrote a kind of pretty convincing column saying war was coming war was coming. And I remember most people in Moscow dismissing this, saying Pavel was being hysterical, that no, there wasn't going to be a conflict. Uh, it, it's all a bit you know, reminiscent of what then happened, of course, in 2022 with Ukraine and the full-scale invasion. Uh, and OK, I read the piece, but I went on holiday to the southwest of England, to Cornwall, uh, and I was surfing in the waves uh, for a couple of hours, came back, to my holiday cottage, looked at my mobile phone, and there were 17 missed calls. Uh, and while I was on the beach, war had broken out. I then had to scramble to get to Georgia, uh, try to fly there. Of course, there were no flights because very quickly, uh, Russian forces had overwhelmed the Georgian army. That they, They'd kicked them out of Skinvali uh, and were advancing in all directions. Uh, airspace was shut. I went to Azerbaijan in the end, drove through the night, uh, and made it to kind of Gori with, with war all around, with, with Russian bomb, Russia bombarding Gori and other places, uh, and a really, a really, really big war was underway. Yeah, Sakish really may have behaved recklessly, but the reality was that Russia had already uh, de facto occupied um, Ossetia, South Ossetia, um, and had sort of troops there in the guise of peacekeepers, uh, and also was was had militarized Abkhazia as well, which had become a kind of client mini state, was building railroads, was doing military exercises. Uh, it was pretty clear to me that one way or another an invasion was coming. Um, and, uh, you know, I write in my book, Mafia State, that it was a sort of brutal lesson in regional geopolitics, that you try and break out from Moscow's embrace and you get smashed. Um, and look, you know, I was on the ground. It, it looked like an invasion. That, 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 I, I say invasion because that's what it was. I mean, I was driving down the road towards Gori, about eight kilometers short in a place called Nazareti, when a Russian helicopter gunship flew over our car and unleashed two orange missiles. Uh, and the reason I remember it so vividly was that our driver panicked and we crashed into the side of the verge. Um, and, you know, he was shaken up, his car was a wreck. I then hitchhiked into Gori with my fixer translator, Lika, which had been smashed by Russian aviation. Um, and it was a surreal few days where, where basically, unlike in Ukraine, the Georgian army was, was really finished off in a very short period of time. And, and Russia could do whatever it liked. I mean, it could have taken Tbilisi, it didn't. Uh, but but uh, on another occasion, a couple of days after a formal ceasefire, I followed a, a Russian tank column from uh, Gori heading towards Tbilisi, I was in a taxi, you know, armored vehicle, armored vehicle, tank, you know, Russian Jeep, then me at the back. It was like a kind of dark cartoon going down to see whether they would seize, seize uh, Tbilisi or not. But after about 30 kilometers, the convoy turned left. The most terrible part about that five day war 15 years ago was the ethnic cleansing, actually, of Georgian villages in this kind of uh, borderland, no man's land, uh, between Skinvali, 
the, the, the South Ossetian capital, basically a Russian possession, more or less, uh, and Gori, uh, which um, Russia ended up sort of controlling for a while and parking its tanks there. And I mean, I remember driving along. Um, this is actually after my car crash. Uh, and hearing this sound, which will, I haven't forgotten, it was like a kind of, a, basically a Russian tank went past and I, from behind a ditch, I heard a kind of low moaning, almost animal, but actually human, it turned out. And then I found about six to seven Georgians, a family distressed, crying, sunburned, weeping, dehydrated, um, who had trekked for three days from, from Georgian villages uh, a, across this kind of burning uh, area to, to escape. And the reason they had done this was that essentially the Russian army swept in and behind the Russian army came Chechen and Ossetian paramilitaries, basically gangs of militia guys who are aligned with Russia. And they went village from village working out who was Georgian, who was Russian. Um, and with the Georgian houses, they set light to them. They took away women who were sometimes raped. They executed really anyone from the, above the age of 15, 15 to 40. They were looking for kind of young men. And this is what endless witnesses told us. Um, and, uh, you, you know, it was clear that this was kind of ethnic cleansing. And you know, was the Russian army directly involved? Pro probably not. But was, was, was the Kremlin aware this was taking place? Of course. The, these Ossetian mobs could could kill civilians because um, they were allowed to. They were allowed to, and it, it was really horrifying. And and of course, it was again. It foreshadowed what's happening in Ukraine, in occupied areas of Ukraine, where where those who are seen as being associated with a sort of patriotic Ukrainian position have been abducted, tortured, um, sometimes murdered, and so on. So. Um, you know, these are familiar methods, but it was just so distressing. You know, I, I went into um, a house in a village called Tikviavi, where these Ossetian paramilitaries had swept in. Uh, and, you know, this column went past and, and a, a guy, old guy, Soviet Georgian born guy called Shamil had peered out the door and someone had shot him in the head and his body lay there for a week. I turned up at his house and saw, you know, I mean, it, it, there were blood stains in the kitchen. I was looking through his family photographs. Uh, and this kind of thing happened in every single village. There were just people, civilians who were executed. Um, and look, I mean, I can understand a fight between military. That makes sense. But actually executing civilian men uh, is a war crime, is a war crime. And so what I remember about Georgia is, is war crimes. We operated in Russia for 12 years and the government tried to get rid of us three times. We had to leave, forced out of the country by new repressive laws after the first week of the war. Our freedom crushed by the authorities. We survived, started working from Europe and now we are watched by millions of people every day. There's no other independent news channel in Russian. We have now decided to tell the truth about Russia in English as well. So that you could get news about Russia, the war in Ukraine, and Russian society directly from the source. We want to tell you firsthand what is really happening in Russia. Subscribe to TVRA Newsroom on YouTube and let's take a look at our future together.